All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we're covering Windows event logs. So I got through this entire box and then realized it says at the end, this is a precursor to the Sysmon and Sysinternals box that we already covered. Um, so I don't know why they're out of order in the cyber defense path, but just heads up, this is technically supposed to be learned before that, I guess. Um, but anyway, let's get into it. If you guys are enjoying the cyber defense path, I would love for you guys to hit that subscribe button, like the videos, let me know what you guys think, and let's hop into it. This one is a lot of information, and hopefully we'll close this because this is for later. So hopefully this box cooperates because I've had a lot of issues with this, and I have to get it reset. But anyway, all right, so what are event logs? Event logs are literally what they sound like. They are whatever you're going to basically log on your systems. So you're gonna hear the term SIEM a lot. This is right here, SIEMs, Security Information and Management, such as Splunk and Elastic, whatever. Um, SIEMs allow you to do a lot more with logs. It will take logs from all kinds of sources and catalog them and make them much, much easier to search. We're gonna show you here how to manually search all this stuff. Um, so that way we can we can get through this, this is just the regular stuff. So that way you can see what it's like if you were just to check a regular log on your machine or what you were like to check if you have a very small infrastructure. So let's go ahead and hop into it. There's three things we're gonna cover in this. There's Event Viewer, the Command Line Tool, and then PowerShell. So all three are good, it just depends on what you prefer. Um, typically, if you're doing like a full-on investigation, you're gonna wanna use like a Command Line or PowerShell. Um, if you're just doing a quick like, hey, this is weird, let me check into it, Event Viewer is great for that. Um, it's all dependent on what you are comfortable with. Don't let someone tell you that because you don't use PowerShell, you don't know how to check logs. Um, it's Event Viewer is a little slower and things like that, but it, it's not gonna s stop you. It's not. There's not a one way to do this. That's my point is a lot of people get hung up on, well, I wanna use command line tools. Command line well, if you're not very good at the command line tool, don't use it. Right? I'm not saying don't get better at it. I'm saying until you're good with it, don't start using it for your day-to-day -day tasks if you're not good with it and it's taking you way, way longer. Okay, like it says here for the savvy sysads that use Cly much of their day, Event Viewer can be launched using eventviewer.msc, which is a Microsoft con console. Um, so we didn't do that. They actually had it on the taskbar for us. We just clicked it. So this is Event Viewer, welcome. So you'll see here, there's different, we're gonna cover this, but here's the different five categories. And here they actually have, um, where they got it at? All right, I don't see it, but you can see here they have kind of out of order, but you can see they have critical error, or criticals, event types, critical error, warning, information, and audit success. And then failure audit doesn't show it down here, but um, that will be, monitored if you allow it as well. And then you can see, let's, so they're covered, the way they're covering it is they're saying there's three tabs. There's this one right here, the middle one, and then this one, right? This one covers, I clicked Windows Logs because that's what we're looking at, a Windows box. But you can ask, also have your own applications and services logged in here. So a developer, when he develops an app, he's going to tell that application what to log, where the logs go in the application's files and things. And you can point this to that or and point the application to this and you can import those logs and start seeing them right here in applications. Now you'll see this, you won't even notice this on big name applications because it's done seamlessly, but if you're developing an application, you might find it a little bit harder to do to get good logs. But um, we're gonna go ahead and hop into the Windows logs. So Windows logs, you can see there's application, security, setup, system, and forwarded events. So the application is, Pretty much what you're gonna see, what you're gonna expect. Yep, so here's desktop windows manager, which is what we're looking at. Um, so these are your application type logs. Um, an application starts up, an application shuts down, that type of thing. Um, security is more of your you know, audit success, meaning someone logged into the computer, someone failed, meaning someone tried to log in, it didn't work, those type of things. And then you can see here, the next section is application services and logs, uh, which is right here. And you can see here, this is where you're starting to get into applications. This is what they're talking about here. Now they put this Windows PowerShell in here, but there is one in the Microsoft Windows. And you see this is all the Microsoft Windows applications. 
Now you can see how this gets very complex very quick because every one of these has thousands of entries, okay? So you got, you're probably sitting there thinking, well, how do I go through all of them? Well, we're gonna cover how to filter them and things like that. And then on top of that, a seam is, I can't even tell you how good it is to have a seam and Splunk is free, so I don't see why you wouldn't have it if you're trying to figure this out. All right, so there we go. So now we're in operational in PowerShell, which is what's gonna have us go to the first one. You guys can read some of this stuff, but getting around in Event Viewer is pretty simple, pretty easy. Um, you just, the key is messing around with it. You got it. you have to go do it, right? So now it's telling us, go in here, right click on operational and select properties. All right, so here's some important stuff. You can see enable logging, that's important because by default, Windows will have certain things enabled, right? If you don't enable this, it's not gonna log anything. It's just gonna get rid of any of those logs. So for instance, if a hacker comes in, he disables the logging, guess what? It's not logging anymore. So that is a an event that you should be logging, which is disabling logging as well. But you can see then here, it's the size, and then overwrites events as needed, oldest events first, and then so on and so forth. You can archive them. Um, now, this is based on your company's policy, that type of thing, but if you are doing this just for yourself, be careful how much you're logging. Think about it really, or really uh, complex thoughts, I guess this is the right, I don't know what I was trying to say, but basically think about it deeply because you it's a fine line of having too much auditing and not enough. Now, the reason I say that is because if you have too much, you'll never figure out what's going on because you'll have to go through millions of logs. If it's not enough, you'll miss important events. So that's where you have to have that balance. And that's where a seam can help you as well because you can store it in a huge database and it can pull alerts for you based on um, behavior. Okay, so lastly, notice the clear log button at the top right. So I, I guess we didn't, I didn't show that. You can see there's a clear log button here what they're saying by notice that is if you click that, you will clear all the logs and that's where a hacker will attempt to do that. Now a hacker's not gonna log in, maybe he will, but not common. He's gonna log in on remote desktop and do it this way, he's gonna do it a different way. But just be cognizant of that because if you clear the logs, there you go, it, all the logs are gone. Okay, so fo focus your attention here on the middle now and we're gonna look at this. Now these levels, these are just oper or different levels of basically importance, if you will, and those are the information, all that stuff that we covered. Um, so you can see, we'll just click on what one of them. The first column is level, which, so yeah, there's level, which is the event type, so informational, critical, error. Um, you can read more about those, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Informational is just informational. It might be legit activity, or it might be something you need to look into. Um, critical is a big alert. And then error is something clearly errored out, something didn't run correctly. If you ran a PowerShell script that errored out, it will pop in a log that says error, not informa or not a information or critical, so on and so forth. Okay, so recall from the earlier, there's five event types. The first one is information. Next is date and time. This is when it happened. That's obviously super important because you need to start building a timeline when an incident happens. Um, then you have the source. This is what was causing this, what was running, what what did whatever cause this event, that's the source of the event. Then you have the event ID. Now these are, it says here they're not unique and I agree with that, but at the same time they are unique in a sense. So for instance, event ID 4103 in PowerShell, this is what it's gonna be. It's gonna be executing a pipeline. Um, I understand that in other applications they might have an event ID named 4103, so it's technically not unique, but in PowerShell, it is a unique ID. And it's the same in Windows. So keep that in mind that you can, they say it's not unique and it technically isn't, but you can Google, hey, what event ID is, like here, I'll show you. Um, we'll just do a quick Google search. And we'll say Windows um, failed login event ID right? 
right there. Log event ID 4625 will document failed login attempts. So while it's not a unique number because technically that could be logged in another application as well with the same number, in Windows, 4625 means someone failed to log in, meaning someone tried to log in, didn't type the right password or whatever. So keep that in mind that it's not unique, but also it, it is. It can help you tremendously to know the event ID. Okay, now create custom views and filter logs. So this is where, let's say, go over. 4103 is the event ID. Let's see, do we have any other? There's 4104. So we'll go to filter. And we can go to event ID and we can just say, just show us the 4103s. And then boom, now we got rid of all the 4104s. It's just going to show us the 4103s. So filtering is self-explanatory, obviously. Now, one thing to keep in mind, you can see here, by log and by source is grayed out. What that means, and we can clear the filters. What that means is you can't, you can't mess with those in the filter current log. Why? Well, you're in the current log. You clicked filter current log. Why would you change the log, right? But what you can do is you can create custom views or import them and you can change pretty much everything. And then there you go. Now you can get more specific. And what that does is it creates that custom view that you can then just hop in any time and click it and it'll show you those logs rather than you sitting here and trying to type it all back out or filtering out again. Okay, so for the questions below, use Event Viewer. To, okay, that, to analyze the operational, which we're in. Was the event, event ID for the first ID? All right, first things first, let's clear the logs, make sure we don't have any filters. All right, so what is the event ID for the first event? So the first event, so we're at, needing to go all the way down to the very first one, if it'll let me. All right, very first one. All right, well, that's not it because that's, 4100. Okay, and you notice that's not the right date anyway because we have it filtered by level because I did that earlier. So let's filter it by date and time. There we go. So now if we go all the way down because we need it filtered by date and time, you see, well, I might have it backwards. Yep, I had it backwards. Okay, so there's the very first one 40, 40961. Now, I'll tell you guys, when you guys get in here, the date and time will be filtered the opposite way. It will be, the first one will be at the bottom. I just clicked these filters and changed changed it earlier, basically. Um, and I didn't mean to. So that's why I had to go to the top instead of the bottom. If I click it again, it's now vice versa. You can see now I'd have to go all the way down here to get that same one. Okay, so keep that in mind that when you guys open this up, it'll be at the bottom. Um, now, filter on event 4104. Okay, so now we need to put filter in. 4104. Boom. Okay, so now what was the second command executed? Okay, so we got to go all the way to the bottom again. And we can look here. And there's the second one, right? So the first one was the prompt. Second one was, whoops, who am I? That was the first or the second thing they basically said was who am I so the second command executed in PowerShell and this is the second in the logs keep that in mind because it only keeps logs for so long who am I so perfect we know exactly what was ran in PowerShell so keep now you guys can kind of see everything you do is logged now unless someone turns them off or deletes them or something they are logged and it's going to tell us a lot of information about who did it so it was ran, who am I? And then you can see here, um, you can see this is the computer that it was ran on. And then you can see here's the user that it was ran on, this the ID and the number for the security user, okay? So keep that in mind. You're pretty much gonna get busted if you don't know what you're doing as far as covering your tracks. Okay, all right. So what is the task category for event ID 4104? So we're filtered by 4104, and there's the task category right there, and it's execute a remote command. So execute a remote command. Perfect. All right. So for the questions below, use Event Viewer to analyze the Windows PowerShell log. All right. What is the task category for event ID 800? So all we have to do, go here, 
change that to 800 because that's the one we want. All right, and it wasn't here, so that's because we need to change this to the Windows PowerShell log, not the one that was created here. We need to go up here. Go back there, and then here's the Windows PowerShell log. So now if we filter it by 800, we get these, and then it's asking for the event ID category, the task category, and it's pipeline execution. Boom, pipeline execution details. All right, enough with event viewer for a second because this is where it starts getting a little bit more complex. Okay, so now we have command prompt open. So now we're gonna use this tool, wevtutil.exe. All right, so if we run it, and we do this, whoops, that's our help menu. Go ahead and make this bigger. And you can see it kind of gives us a little information. If we want to enumerate logs, there we go. If we want to get long list, da 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 da, so on and so forth. Um, so keep that in mind that this, you can always go back to this help menu. That's something I recommend on pretty much everything. Um, and you guys will see that I do have notes on this one because, not on this specific one, but on this box because there's a lot that you have to Google in this box and a lot you have to look up. So to save some time, I just kind of wrote stuff down. All right, so here we go. We got the help command. In this example, Enum Publishers, which you can see right here, Enum Publishers is EP. So there, do, 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 do. let's see, let's get to the bread and butter here. Okay, so here you go. You can do this, which is very similar to some of the stuff you've seen on Linux. If you actually do QE, which is right here, where is it? QE, query events, and then do the help command. It gives you more information about the query events. So you can see usage, by default, you put uh, you can right here, read events from an event log, log file, or using structured query. So what does QE do? It reads events from an event log. Perfect, okay, we figured it out. Okay, now you have enough information to use this tool, time to answer some questions. Now this one, this is, one problem I have with this box is it's very convoluted and not very clear on a lot of stuff. Um, so like it says here, you can get more information about using this tool at docs.microsoft.com. Okay, but it doesn't tell you you have to look outside the tool currently. Um, and you'll you'll see what I mean. Um, but yeah, you, you're going to have to basically look outside the tool. Um, let's see. So what we're going to do is we're going to say... Now, if you look here at a hint, it'll say use PowerShell pipe the L command to measure object commandlet. So that's what I'm saying is you need to do this. So it's saying use PowerShell right off the bat. That's not something they told you right off the bat. So that's kind of frustrating, right? So what we'll do, PowerShell, we'll just hop into a PowerShell. We'll use the same tool. Oh, cool. It did actually keep all my stuff from earlier. So I don't have to retype all this. Perfect. Okay. So here we go. So we, are we using the EL? Yep. So you can see we're going to use the utility. Then we're going to use EL, which if you look up here, is enumerate logs. And then we're piping it. If you guys don't know what the pipe does, it takes whatever the result of this first command is and feeds it into the next. And we're going to measure object. Now, I'll show you why. First, we'll hit it if it loads. This box has been doing this to me all day, so hopefully this, this bears with me here. Okay. Come on. There we go. Okay, so you see the count is 1,071. How many log names are in the machine? 1,071. So now, if you do this without the, the pipe, without saying measure it, you get 1,071 results. So you can see why the pipe is kind of important here. Okay. Now, what is the definition for query events command? Okay, so what does that mean? It means if we do the query events, which is QE, and then the help command, we need the definition. Read events from an event log, log files, or use log file or using structured query. So it wants that exact definition. 
That's not that hard. Okay, now what option would you use to provide a path to a log file? Well, you can see right here, here's the actual option. It's, and that's what they're looking for. They're looking for the forward slash LF and then the colon true. Now, this is kind of confusing the way they wrote this, and I'm, so I'm gonna kind of explain it a little bit. What they're saying is you can use LF or you can use the actual full word log file. And then what they're saying is then a colon, then you can put true or false. That's what they're saying, okay? So I know it's confusing, I know it looks weird, but that's what they're saying. Okay, so now what is the value for forward slash Q? And right here, forward slash Q or query. And value is an X path query. So it's, a, what is the value? X path query. And we're gonna cover X path queries here shortly. Now, the questions below are based on this command. Okay, so I guess we run this command. So web t util qe application. So when you're typing application like this, you remember there's application, security logs, all those things. That's what it's doing. It's gonna query the application. And then the C is saying, and I think it walks you through it here. Let's see, let's, let's type this out, run it, and then we'll walk through what happened. Okay, so you can see we get some results here. Pretty easy, pretty normal. Um, but it's asking us some questions. First, it's asking us, what is the log name? Well, we typed it out. It was application. That's the name of the log. And it says right here, log name, application. So that's literally what we're typing out. Now, if you remember the C, the C is the maximum amount. So count, count three. So only show us three, basically, logs. Um, and then the RD, the RD true, that's saying we want the most recent first. Um, so that's just basically kind of formatting how we get it. And then the text is just the format that we want it in and we want it in text. So you can see here, we're getting them in order and we're getting text. Okay, so now what is the RD option? Event read direction, how we're getting them. We want it read to us in the correct direction, if you will, or the correct timeline. And then C, maximum number of events to read. Now, if you have questions how to get these exact answers, if you remember up here on the help menu, the C, maximum number of events to read, and the RD, event read direction. There you go. All right, and you can see it said if true for RD, then most recent will come first, which is why we put true. Okay, so now we're hopping into PowerShell commands, which I think PowerShell is a little bit better than this tool, but this tool allows you to do some pretty good stuff when you're starting to do the uh, XML stuff. So let's get into Windows event logs. Let's do it. All right, so here's the format for it. Get win event, log name, application, where object, oh, that's driving me nuts. Where object equals blah, blah, blah. Now, what they're saying here is this has been replaced, okay? So if you've never used this, perfect. Don't ever use it. Just forget about it. Use filter hash table. So you can see here, okay, I thought that'd be bigger. It says get win event and then filter hash table. And then you can build a table. So at sign and then put it in a bracket. And then log name equals application, provider name equals WLMS. You can put as much information there as you want and close it with a bracket and boom, you run it and you get that filter. So it's very similar to looking at event viewer. You're gonna get the filter. This crashed on me again. All right. And then, so basically you don't have to, let's see if we can open event viewer here. So if we look at details here in event viewer, you're gonna see that all these details, we can start filtering for all that stuff if we want to, okay? So that's kind of keep in mind what we're doing here if, if we wanted to. Okay, so you don't need to use a semicolon if you separate each key value with a new line. So if you write a script that will run and give you every log that you want for something, keep that script and then you can just keep doing that. Okay, so when building query with hash tables, now it gives you, here's some of the stuff you can filter for or you can look for. Log name, provider name, path, keywords, ID, level, start, blah, 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 blah. You get it. You can get very specific with the filtering. Now, the reason I'm skimming through a lot of this is because number one, it's a lot of information. Number two, this isn't gonna help you to just read this. You have to actually use this. You have to go through, make an event happen. Go run some PowerShell scripts, 
wait two or three days, then go try and find where you did it, how you did it, and follow that path, right? Um, now, you could do it just right after, but it's not going to be hard to find if you do it right after because you're gonna, it's going to be the first thing that pops up, okay? So, all right, so here we go. Based on this information, the hash table will look as follows. So if you're trying to filter for this log, you look at the log name. So Windows event log, filter hash table, log name, application, provider name or source, MSI installer, okay? And then ID, 11707. So you see how right here you can just filter that specific information and take the information here, filter it, and then you'll get that log that you're looking for. Okay, so here's a command that you might find useful. Boom, and you can see it's just giving you examples. Now, I will say you're gonna need to look at some of the Microsoft documentation on this. Um, that's, again, why I don't really like this box because I don't like boxes that tell you go over here to do this, go over here to do this, go over here to do this. I can Google that and find that for me, right? So if you're an educational box, if you're teaching me something, teach it to me. Don't say, go check this out to teach it, right? Because then you're not teaching me, you're telling me to do my own research and I could have done that at the beginning, right? So just keep that in mind. Um, okay, so answer the following using the online help doc documentation. Now, it's important that you use this online documentation and I'll show you why. Because for some of you, uh, I have to, uh, maybe I don't have it. I think I do actually. Okay, for some of you, including myself, you may have done what I did, which is not go to this, which this is the documentation that you need, the online. And then I'm sitting here going, where is example one? There was no example one. I'm looking for it, I can't find it. Well, ta-da, if you go down here to the Microsoft documentation, here is example one. Now, the reason that's important is because I'm gonna be referencing this, I'm not gonna pull it over every single time because we're gonna type the commands out. But I'm gonna show you. So, what it's saying is, execute the command as is to see what you get, okay? So now we're gonna say get, when event, and you can tab out some things in PowerShell. The reason I say some things, you can technically tab out everything, but it will keep scroll cycling through all the options. So sometimes you have to kind of spell it out for it. All right, so this is the first example that it's given us. You can see we get a ton of results, but at the bottom is open SSH admin and open SSH operational, which is right here. Now, what was the command? Get Windows event and list the logs. So what was it? It was listing all the logs for us on the Windows events, okay? So that's why there's so many of them. All right, now, execute command from example eight. So let's go down to example eight. Okay, so this one is get win. Of, so you're gonna see this is what happens if you tab it. And you have to scroll through them until you get to Windows event. I'm not gonna do that, I'll just go win event, okay, and then list provider, okay, and then here they have in the example policy, but it's telling us instead of policy, search for PowerShell, so the provider now, we're only looking at PowerShell as the provider or the application that's providing the logs. Okay, what's the name of the third log provider? So if we hit this, what's the name of the third log provider? Well, let's look. Well, we've got one, PowerShell, two, Windows PowerShell, and then three, Microsoft Windows PowerShell Desired State Configuration Download Manager. Okay, so that's what they want. Now, what does that mean? It means when you're looking at providers for logs, anything with PowerShell in the name, here's the three that come up. So those three are providing logs to your log, whatever you're using, whether it's a seam or a log aggregator, whatever you're using, to collect your logs, these three are providers of that. Okay, now execute the command from example nine. Okay, so this one's a little bit bigger. Let's see, does it give us any, use Microsoft Windows PowerShell as a log provider. Okay, so I'm gonna type this out um, exactly as is, and then we can um, go back and fix it. So get win event uh, list provider, and here's where it's telling us to change the provider to Microsoft Windows 
power shell. Okay, so that's who we're gonna use as the provider. And then from there, events. And then we're gonna pipe this into format table. So all this is gonna do is give us a nice table how it looks with just the ID and description. Okay, and you can see we get a bunch of stuff. Boom, boom, boom. Now, how many events are, are displayed? Now, if you remember, we need to do the same thing, but this time we're gonna pipe it again. So if you remember, we had to pipe it. We did this once before. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to pipe it again into the um, the other, the geez, max events. I can't talk today. Max events. Okay, what did I do? Okay, gotcha. All right, so and you can see right here, that's why it did not work because I didn't pipe it correctly. So we're gonna say measure. I looked at the next step instead of the one I was looking at, that's why. Measure object, okay? And you can see measure object we piped it earlier that way. That's what we needed to get the count, which is 192. I was looking at the next step and I skipped ahead. So if you're confused at all, I just typed in the wrong thing because I was looking at the next step. Okay, but if you remember, we did that at the beginning on task two maybe to get the exact same result. So we just piped it twice that time. So what we did is we ran this command, get win event, list provider, Microsoft Windows PowerShell. So we're asking for anything any of the providers with Microsoft Windows PowerShell. And then we're saying format it so that we just get the table ID and description. And then we're saying feed all that into measure object to give us, we'll have 192 results. Now, how do you specify the number of events to display? Now you can look at the help menus, you can look at the documentation. Um, let's see, let's pull it up and see on the documentation. Uh, do, 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 do. I don't see it right off the bat, but basically it's in the documentation. I mean, they have an entire dedicated website to PowerShell basically, um, but that's gonna be what you're looking for, max events. That's gonna give you the maximum number of events to display, and that would be um, a syntax that you would use. So if we pipe that into, or if we use that here, we would say max events, and let's say we wanted two, we'll only get two, okay? When using the filter hash table parameter and filtering by level, what is the value of the informational? And I'll show you what that means because that might not make sense to everybody. So you just go on here. This is the same documentation, but this is just Windows documentation. Now, so let's just go to filter hash table. And this is because I'm gonna start, I'm gonna look at the filter hash table command and we're gonna take a look and say, here we go, creating get win event query with hash table. And it's saying when using the filter hash table parameter, filtering by level, what is the value of the information? So what does that mean? We're filtering by level. So let's scroll down and look. So here we go, There's you can filter by level, okay? Now, what level is informational? That's what they're saying. And if we scroll down, here we go, filtering by level right here. So we're exactly on it, filtering by level. Here's informational, right? Okay, it's not there, so scroll down a little further. Informational, the value is four. So instead of saying filter by informational, you can say filter four, right? And then you'll get it. All right, so now here's the, here's the bad part, everybody. That was the easy stuff, right? So if this is going way over your head, just get in here and start messing with Windows events. Um, unless you're doing a lot of Windows event logging, looking, unless you're familiar with seams and stuff like that, you're probably gonna be a little bit confused and that's okay. The biggest thing is to start diving in and using this to find events. The reason this whole thing exists is to find events. Now, most enterprise systems don't use things like this. They're gonna actually use, um, they're gonna actually go in and use seams, but keep in mind, if you're doing like an investigation or something and you have a very small, you know, you've got it narrowed down, you will use stuff like this. So it's important to know it. Okay, so now we're gonna use examine filtering events using XPath. Now, 
XPath, whoops, there we go, is this XML view. And we're gonna basically be using this to get our path. And you'll see what I mean here. Okay, so when we're using XPath, we're gonna say get win event, log name, application, filter, path, okay? Now, this is how it looks. Filter path and the star starts it. Now a star starts the, the path, but you have to fill in the path. So here's how it's pretty easy to figure out. It's actually not complex if you, if you break it down. So let's say we're looking at, excuse me, this right here, this whole log. You go to XML view. Well, we're at the event we've already got because that's what the star indicates the event. So we're good there. Now system, okay. So now we need to, just like a regular directory, put in forward slash system, okay. So now we're into the system. Now let's say we wanted to do task. Well then we do forward slash task as our next one. And then you would say equals eight. So now, perfect example, here we go. So here's our filter XPath system. And they went straight to the event ID. So then they went to event ID. So event ID equals 100. And you can see that's the command. So they're going down the tree just like you would in any other directory. All right, and then you can see here, you can do this with the same tools that we used previously. All right, it's still letting me in. And then you can see it gets a little more complicated if you go to this one. You get get Windows event log, log name, application, filter path, blah, blah. That's always gonna be the same. And then the star, and then system, provider, and then this at symbol for the name, you're gonna basically have to put that in front of anything that you're going to be putting in brackets like that. And a lot of this is just playing with the syntax. If you get the concept, you're fine. You can figure out the syntax if you get the concept. Okay, the big thing is knowing what to look for. Now, if you're looking for data name rather than system, just like you think, you change system to event data to hop into this tree. And then data, and then at name, equals, and then there's target username, and then there's the system. So target username equals system, okay? And we're gonna cover this. All right, so now, one thing I'll tell you here. <laughs> I made the mistake of thinking this command, I sat here and ran it on the box over and over, I'm like, I'm not messing this command up, what's it doing? This command, they just ask you for it. They don't want, it doesn't do anything on the box, you get no results. Okay, so using get win event in XPath, what is the query to find WLMS events? So, with the system time. So, you can kind of piece together what they've already done to get this for you. So, get win event, log name, application, filter XPath. That's gonna always be there, right? So, we can just go ahead and take that, copy it, boom, we've got that. Now, we're going to put in quotes to start and then a star to say event, right? So, now we're in the system forward slash system, okay? And we're trying to get, keep in mind, if you remember, it says here, we're trying to get, find WLMS events, okay? So if you look up here, they already have it here, WLMS events. So we can just take this, right? We don't have to overcomplicate this. We don't have to try and reinvent the wheel. They've already done this for us. So take this, put that as your first, your first one. Whoops. All right, so system provided name WLMS, we did that. Now we need to add another parameter. So we say and, and then right there again, we have to hit start with an asterisk and system, again, we're going down the system tree, system, okay? And then we're looking for time. So system, time created. So now we go to time created. And then because this has a little bit of, um, it has a space that we need to throw in there, system time. We say at system time equals, and then they give us the time here, and those go in quotes, and then you end the brackets, or you end the quotes, I'm sorry, then end the brackets, and then close the whole thing. And then when you run that, boom, you're in business. That's what you're gonna, gonna run. Now, that's just what they want. They're not going to, I, that one didn't run, or when it ran, it didn't do anything on my box. <clears throat> so keep that in mind. This one will. So this one, using get win event XPath was the query to find username Sam. Now this one, hopefully I have it saved because I'll go back because we need to run it again. Um, 
Okay, so this is it right here, I think. Yeah. Okay, so we'll break this down here. So we have get win event log name security. So here's a big key to this one that you might miss. You notice we changed the log name from application to security because we're looking at log on events now. That's a security log, not an application log. Okay. Now, then you have filter path, filter X path, excuse me, which you're always going to have. And then here we go. So we go straight into it. We're going into the command. Now, we're, keep in mind, if we look at the screenshot here, we're going into event data. We're not going into system. We're going into event data. So we go into event data and then we say, okay. And then we know data is the next one because right here's data. And then you notice anytime there's a space in there, you're throwing in this col this uh, bracket and then at, and then the next word. So at name, and the name is target username. So that's where we're getting the target username. And then equals Sam because they're telling us we need to figure out Sam. And then we need to figure out the event ID. So, and then we say and, and then we go back and now we're not, not in data anymore, we're in system. So now we go into system and event ID equals 4720. So let's hit enter on that. Come on. I hate this box. It just, it just does not want to cooperate. There we go. Okay, and it says, based on the previous query, how many results are returned? And we've got two here, so perfect. So now, based on the output from, from the question two, okay, what is the message? And the message is right here. A user account was created. Perfect. So there's your message. A user account was created. Now, still working with Sam, what time was event ID 4724 created? Now we can look. We can go right back. And we can run, all right, and this is, so this is the same thing. We're saying Sam, and we're saying system, and we're doing the event ID, but we just changed the event ID. So we did the exact same command as before. We would change the event ID to 4724, not 4720. We hit enter, and boom, you can see we don't really need to do anything else because it tells us right there that's the time it was created. So there you put the time in, boom. Now, what is the provider name? And the provider name right here, Microsoft Windows Security Auditing. So there you go. You know that Microsoft Windows Security Auditing provided this log, and this log happened at this time, and so on and so forth. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. I know that the you know X path is a little bit harder, but it pays off in the end if you really want to look specifically for things. Okay. So now event IDs. Okay, here we are again talking about how event IDs aren't unique, but you can search with event IDs. So keep that in mind that while they're not unique, they kind of are. Okay, so what they're telling you here is you can use um, a couple of these resources, logging cheat sheets, um, event ID cheat sheets. You could find all kinds of pre-made queries for PowerShell and things to find specific logs, all that stuff. Um, you can use MITRE attack. We've used the MITRE room, so you can go on to my video for that one. Um, you can do all kinds of stuff to get cheat sheets basically is what they're saying. They're saying don't reinvent the wheel, don't memorize all this crap. And I'm not saying don't memorize some of it because you should understand how to get around here. You should be able to, if someone says, hey, at 1240 yesterday, someone was trying to log into my account and I need to find that log. You should be able to go find that. Now, it might take you an hour, it might take you five minutes, depends on your experience. But you should be able to go find that. That's the key to this box, okay? Now, Detection, collect events that correlate with changes to accounts, objection, blah, blah, blah. So what they're telling us here, what they start talking about here is they start telling us that basically you can have it set up to where your Windows firewall will record things as well, um, like firewall changes, ACL changes, all that stuff. But the thing is not a lot of enterprise systems might have Windows firewall turned on for certain things, but they're not going to um, usually use Windows firewall as their firewall. Now, Here's another thing to keep in mind. These, what is being logged on your machine is usually set by group policy that you cannot control if you're if it's for work or something like that. So keep that in mind in an enterprise environment, what is being logged is not being logged the same way that you saw it before, which is where we go and select that little box and say, log this, don't log this, whatever. 
it is being logged at a higher level group policy. Every time you log in, that group policy gets updated. So keep that in mind. Okay. So you can see here, they're showing you how to turn logs on versus off. And that's why I say group policy is going to usually do this, but you can do it through um, different things. Um, I'm not going to walk through a lot of this because you can go through this. They're just showing you that if you ran that, there you go. There's the process, all that stuff. Okay, so now we're ready to look at some event logs. So let's go ahead and put theory into practice. Um, the reason I didn't cover all that is because this is already a long video. I'm trying not to make this any longer than we need to. And let's go. All right, so what event ID is to detect a PowerShell downgrade attack? So again, this is where we come back to, we're gonna need to do a lot of Googling, okay? And it's not even a lot of Googling, it's just pretty easy. So what event ID is PowerShell downgrade attack. And keep in mind, this is real life. When I say this is real life, if this specific thing happened to me, I would go Google what is a or what ID is the PowerShell downgrade attack. I would not just have that memorized in my head, okay? Now, you can see here, I type it in. First thing pops up is ID 400. What's the answer? ID 400, perfect. So now we open up event manager do 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 now this one it's i believe we're using yeah so this one we're going to be using this we're going to be using this file which is a saved um log that happened i guess or they they recreated whatever um so they give you scenarios here right so the powershell downgrade attack happened boom 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 and here you go what are you going to do all right so we found the event id is 400 so now we can go ahead and filter this and we can say, show us all 400. Okay. What is the date and time that this attack took place? Now, you can see right here. Boom. That's when it took place. Now, there's a couple ways you can tell it took place. You may have to know a little bit um, more. But you can see here. Here, their regular commands are running. And this is where they're embedding. And then here, there you go. You can see that it's now giving you, and if you look at it, you can actually break this down. It's now it's kind of hidden, if you will, right? So this is where the downgrade happened. So that's where, and it's the first thing, first log they give you. So you can pretty much guess that. Um, okay, let's keep going. A log clear event was recorded. What is the event record ID? Okay, so what do you do? Quick Google search will tell us that right here. Let's find it. Do, 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 do. A log clear event was recorded. So now what do we need to do? We need to find the event ID. So let's go ahead and start looking. Do, do, do. And if you Google, you find that event ID 104 is log clear. Now there's, keep in mind, there's multiple logs that you can clear. So you may have to try a couple of different ones because 1102 is also one. But if you type 104, there's only one. That's easy. So now it's saying, what is the event record ID? This is where you got to go in the XML view, or you can go in the general view and details. However you want to do it, doesn't matter. You're just looking for as much information as you can. This doesn't give me much here, but the XML will. Now we're looking for rec event record ID, event record ID, 27736. Boom. What is the name of the computer? Right there, computer, pc01.example.corp. So that's important because most people... Most people, when they get a new computer or create a new login or whatever on a computer, when you very first turn on your Windows machine for the first time ever, it asks you, what do you want to name your computer? And you might say, John's computer, Tim's computer, so on and so forth, right? That's a key because look what happens when you do anything. It gives me the name of that computer. So even if you try to hide your tracks and let's say you hide your IP, all that stuff, but you forget that your computer is named, you're going to get busted. So keep that stuff in mind. Um, now, that's that's not a common one, but that's an, a commonly overlooked one. We'll say that. Okay, so now, are we still in example one? I don't even know. So questions three and Okay, guys, welcome back. The system has crashed like three times. We finally got it working. Let's hope that this stays. Okay, so first things first, we're on... This question here was the name of the first variable. Now, make sure you're paying attention to what questions or what scenarios because otherwise you're going to be confused. So they advise searching for event ID 4104 
and the text script block text. Okay, so what's that tell us? It tells us that we got to go ahead and filter to 4104. Hit OK. Boom. And then it says here, find the encoded PowerShell payload. And then find, what's the name of the first variable? So we know that it's an attack, right? So we're going to go all the way down to the bottom to when it first happened because these are all the PowerShell. This is probably what is going on in the in the attack. So we go to the first one and boom, there's your first pay or PowerShell um, variable because we know that all PowerShell variables start with a money sign. So there you go. Now, you can see it's obviously, you're obviously not going to be able to read through this, but you might be able to decode it, figure out what's going on. Now, was the date time to the attack took place? That's pretty easy. 8-25-2020, 28 p.m. Pretty simple. Um, and then was the execution process ID? So if we go over to XML and we go to execution process ID, 6620. Perfect. So that's the process ID of what was executed. And then was the group security ID of the group she enumerated? Okay, so this is a different one, 8-9. A report came in that an intern was suspected of running unusual commands on a machine, such as enumerating members of the admin group. A senior analyst suggested searching for Windows System32 Net1.exe to confirm the suspicion. Okay, so we're on a totally different scenario now. Keep that in mind. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to Google search, okay, and we're going to find basically what we need to find. So let's go ahead and Google Okay, and do, 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 do. Uh, okay, so now we're gonna look for uh, basically what affects a group. That's what we're gonna look for. And I think I actually had that this saved. So, what event ID is all right. Uh, crap, I can't. There we go. Okay, so what event ID is activity affecting a group? Okay. And it looks like Okay, nope. What we want to do pay more attention to the question, Zach, you idiot. All right, so what we're going to do is enumerating members. So we're going to say what event ID is used for enumerating groups. Okay, and there we go. We get event ID 4798. Okay, and then if you look through that and you actually go through, 4799 is also um, one of the event IDs. So 4798, 4799. Well, just to cut, save some time because this video is very long, it's 4799. But you can search for both and get them. Um, now, so then we're going to go through and we're going to obviously view the one at, at the same time frame, right? Or the earliest one, I'll say. Because all these attacks, I think, happen around the same time. Um, and you can see if we go to details and we can stay here on... XML view, or we can, you can see here the target SID is S1532544, target security ID, pretty simple. Um, there we go. Let's see. Then it's asking us, what is the event ID? 4799. Now, like I said, if you just Google enumerating user groups, 4798 or 4799 will come up. All right. And that's it, guys. That's it. Now, this is where I realized it's supposed to be for Windows internal sysmon and various seam tools. It's supposed to be before that, but we already covered some of the seam tools. So make sure you realize that all of these logs, because there's millions of them getting generated, are being pushed into a seam where you can do quick queries and log thousand computers at once rather than trying to go to each one and look through their event viewer. So Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, it was a little bit messed up because the box kept crashing on me as I was trying to do tasks and it was driving me nuts. So I was getting thrown off. Um, so hopefully you guys understood everything. This is a very complex um, box, if you will, because it has you reaching out to other sites. It has you doing all, it's just very convoluted. I didn't like the way they did it. 
Um, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully it helped some of you guys and hopefully it's the longest one on the, on the cyber defense path. Thanks guys. And I hope every one of you has a good day and hopefully you guys have better luck with this box than I did.